Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. We are on Socialites and Snapdragon Day. Plus, I have a Q&A, which is kind of fun. So, <laughs> with a Snoopy question. Yeah, Snoopy, and not the animal. That's not the cartoon. <laughs> it cracked me up. Okay, Socialites, let's do that first. This is the pattern today, and it is from Brigitte Heitland of Zen Chic, and it's called New Plus Old, which I think is really a neat, neat, neat name for the block. And here is mine. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the other side and walk through uh, the fabric options and what you could be doing. Before we look at the social lights, picking fabric, I wanna show you what I'm doing with the blocks for the Tula Pink Butterfly. So what I have is these design boards. So remember I showed you, they're still here because I'm working on them. So I showed you the, the sections that I had pulled and I have the design board. So these are 14 inch, yeah, these are 14 inch design boards, which are awesome for doing um, this block. And I have three of them, one for each color set. So this color set is cut. Now I have to do the other green and then the other pink orange one where I am going to substitute in uh, for the corner squares right here on this block I will do that or I might do the middle that'd be more bold I don't know we'll see what I feel like when I start cutting it but these are keeping it track and you can stack them you can definitely stack them because this is not um, it doesn't have any surface on it it's just the poster board so they just lay right on top and when you pull it up, there they are. Sometimes I might slide it a little like this just because there might be some um, static that will get to it. But for the most part, I find that the static just doesn't even happen. And it's dry winter right now. So I think that that's pretty good uh, that it doesn't. Okay, let me put this over here and we will look at the socialites block. So here the block is again with with that with it all made up but we'll look at some fabrics because uh, i'm doing it in the fig tree fabrics if you are a fan of brigitte heitland's uh, zen chic fabrics and maybe you're sewing yours in her fabric line which would be so beautiful so here's my basket of fig tree fabric so i decided that i really wanted to use this text print here so then i thought i need to bring aqua in again to some of the blocks so that would be perfect the red and aqua pulling the red from the text print and then this is my promise me fabric which is i'm using for the background so it gives a little sparkle right here if you have the square and the square papers this is the one that you want to use for these um, this size block this is the middle size block and uh, they're finishing it six and a half by six and a half. And so this is the paper that you need. Now for the center, I could have gone with a lot of different options. Uh, some of them have more pattern. So like I didn't really want to go for that because it, it would just sort of, it wouldn't be very uh, defined. I thought it, I just really wanted something that read more tonal. So that would mean no to those guys. And then this also a big print and it just, the white overtakes it when you get down to a little tiny square like that. So you, then you get a lot of white. So it's like, no, same with that, same with that. So it sort of came down to a couple of these that read more solid. And I went with this one, which reads very, very solid. It does have a little bit of print in there, which is nice. And now on the outside, I wanted to pull red again with either the blue or the teal. So here were the different options that I have. And I think any of them would have made a wonderful block. Um, you know, this one is going to have, you know, there's these pieces are small. So when you have a little bit bigger, you know, do you, you want like a whole rose, which would take up or sort of fussy cut around to get these smaller bundles, which actually would have been a beautiful block. But I went with this one. And so here it is in all of its glory. So let's go look at all of those blocks together up on the wall. So I put them up on the design wall so we can sort of see the grouping and how they're coming along. And then we'll get to strap Snapdragon. <laughs> Here are the first nine blocks of Socialites. Ah, looking so good. Just loving them. 
Now remember the layout. These blocks are never going to be sitting this close to each other in the quilt. They are each within like a star or something like that. Some might be a little closer to each other. And so they will be um, separated color wise. And I might switch around a few as I get more done and start looking at the setting where they go within the setting. I might switch them around just based on color balance, but I'm not worried about that yet. Uh, I don't have to think about that. Till, I mean, I don't, I can always switch them at the very end because it depends. I might not sew this whole layout up until the end. We'll see. We will see. You know, I like to sew them a little sooner, but this one might wait till the end. So there they are. So before we go to the other side to do Snapdragon, let me just do some Q&A today. So I'm getting down to some of the older ones, cleaning them up. I think I still have maybe three or something that I'd saved off. And then I will start a whole new batch, probably start a thread to get some new uh, questions from you. But the first one came from a, 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 several people. And that was for the butterfly quilt with Tula Pink, because you're a, using a kit, you know, so the fabric's already cut for you. And as you know, the fabric is not washed, it's not starched, it's just off the bolt and cut when you get a kit. Uh, they want to know, can they wash it and starch it in advance? So here is my recommendation. One, I don't do either of those things with a kit. I use the fabric as is. Uh, most quilt shop fabric is very color resistant, so I'm not worried about that. We use the dye catchers to wash it. As far as starching, I don't starch fabric unless I'm doing little tiny pieces. And even then I try to avoid it at all times. I just don't feel the need to starch fabric. Um, it's an extra step and I'm too impatient. So I don't usually do it unless it's small pieces. Like a lot of the things for this project, I, you know, there's parts of this socialites that I will starch. So I don't know if you feel that you have to starch this, then what you'll have to do is write to Tula Pink and ask her about her kit. Uh, I didn't make these kits. These were sold by her fabric company and she would have been the one who put all of the sizes that are needed in there for the kit. So you could write her and ask her. And then if you find an answer, uh, let me know. <laughs> because <laughs> I can't answer that. I don't know. I didn't cut the kits. I don't know how they set that up. Okay, so the next thing was uh, Kathy wrote about my pillow that I gifted and she was like, um, how did I make that plaids all match perfectly? I didn't. They're not matched perfectly. I only had a very small amount of fabric and I was squeezing out all of that. And I, I cut it, just cut it. I did not match a single thing. And so you look closely, they are not matched. <laughs> I'm the, you probably could have matched it, but I didn't. Um, so Vicki, <laughs> Vicki, you're very silly. She says, I'm snoopy, meaning she's nosy. <laughs> so she wants to know, what is that? What are those rolls that you see sometimes? These are interfacings, tear away interfacings. I've got heat and bond. Yeah. Like what would you think it would be? I'm curious. Like they're just rolls of supplies. So what, what, what did you think it was Vicki? Huh? <laughs> I'm curious. Let me know. Send me an email. Tell me what you thought those were. <laughs> it's just quilting supplies, sewing supplies. Okay, two more, two more questions. Uh, Shari asked, and this is interesting, and I would, I would, I'm not really sure how to answer this. So I think if you all have answers, uh, leave comments there in the description box. She wants to know how you keep track of things when you're chain piecing so that you don't get blocks mixed up. Now, if you're chain piecing this, well, yeah, I just have it in order. So I'm, I'm sewing maybe a section. Let me see. Can I, can I do this visually? Let me just maybe show you here. Like if I'm chain piecing, I am going to sew all eight of these two units. I'm going to sew this and sew all eight, and then I will press them open. So I don't have anything to get confused about. Uh, if I'm sewing like another block, like uh, from the sweater weather block, 
Well, first of all, it's like a totally different shape block. It has totally different fabrics in it, so it would, I would not get confused with those. If I was taking this and sewing maybe the orange one next, like as a leader ender kind of coming in, once again, totally different fabric, so I would not get confused that the fabric that's from the orange block would go into this green block. So I'm not sure if that helps, if that answers your question, or if that is what your question really is. Uh, so if you still have that question, maybe ask it differently, uh, more specifically, because you know what do you do that messes up? Maybe that might help us help you. So, okay, and the last one I have is from Tony. Let me get this. Tony wanted to know, what do people do with swatch cards? So first of all, if you don't know what a swatch card is, companies put these together. You probably have seen them for thread. Like if you have done anything with like embroidery thread, DMC, um, Aurifil does them for their all their thread weights. Um, but the fabric manufacturers periodically put out these swatch cards. And inside are fabric swatches like this so that if you use a lot of that particular basic, they're generally done for a basic, uh, and you might say, okay, I have a basic. Now this one is all white. It is a fairly new card. It's a ba but you might say, well, you know, do I like this print to go in with my project? Or let me get, or maybe you're looking at this print versus this print and you're looking at scale. You're like, okay, look at the scale of that honeycomb versus this guy. You know, of course this one I think is orange and that one's red, but you could get the idea that uh, what you're dealing with for your project and then order what you need. Other swatch cards are actually basics that are like the actual colors, like let's say, let's say there was a swatch card of all of these. Well, then you would have a little square and you would have the you know 10 colors that this comes in and you'd be able to match it. Does this lime green work for my project or is it the wrong shade? And that's what swatch cards do for you. So the thing is they don't stay around long. I think I've shown you the Moda cards, which look like a paint chip thing. They were a rectangle. And those, you know, they are not being made right now. You might find them on the aftermarket, but that's, um, that's how many of us use these. And then one day, if you decide you really don't want this anymore, you can just pull it off of here, probably. You can probably pull it off. Yeah, most of them are done with some sort of a double-sided tape or something like that. And then you might be able to use those. But uh, they're, they're, they're interesting and useful, I think, for people who like to have a certain basic and are looking for color matching and don't want to you know, haul maybe a bunch of their stuff to the store. Um, and they know they use do it a lot. So swatch cards. <laughs> okay, let's go over and look at Snapdragon today. We're on another week. We are moving along. We are almost done. <laughs> And voila, Snapdragon, we have just this week and next week, and then you're done, baby, you're done. So <laughs> I think that's so fun. Our blocks this week we are doing are this navy, which will go on the this row here, on the third row. The navy goes on the third row, and you see I've got everything sewn, and the third row is sewn up until that point, so I just need to put the sashing on, so I'm doing that sashing as I go. There is just a white border around the whole thing as well, so there you can see there's a white border around it. Okay, then the other block is this one with the, from these are all my sleepover fabrics, and so it's another pink block. Now I do have to tell you that if you're looking at the digital rendition, this block actually should have gone at the top and I grabbed the wrong one. I did the deeper, uh, more tonal uh, block. So it doesn't really matter because they are very similar. So this one will go at the bottom and I do need to do the horizontal sashing. So I will put the horizontal sashing along here so I can get that whole row done. This whole row, third row will be sewn to the first, second row at the top. And then I will put sashing on either side and then probably sew the horizontal row and just have that ready to go so that next week we'll do the last two blocks in the Snapdragon. 
I love it. It is so pretty. It turned out so pretty. Oh, <laughs> always feels good when you hit that point when you know and you love it and you're like, oh, yes, 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 yes. You know, I don't do as many repeat blocks. If you've noticed, I do them for my fabric lines and it is very fun. It is very fun to have a going, you know, changing it up from a sampler to a um, block that is just, uh, you know, the same block and repeat. But this quilt is also a little bit different where each repeat, each block is just two fabrics. It's just the feature fabric and the background. And uh, so that was really, really interesting to me because it's not the way I normally, you know, it's not my go-to method, but I think it's fun to do quilts that are a little different every now and then. Okay, so the next time you see me, my hair is going to be cut. I have got pins pulling it back because it has been a long time. And I just, the other day, it was just like, okay, that's it. That's it. Of course, it was like two days before Christmas when I decided that. And my lady was out. And so I called this morning. I'm like, can I come today? <laughs> and she's like, yes, you can. So I am getting my hair cut right after this video filming just about so tomorrow Saturday please say it looks nice <laughs> I'm sure you will but but say it anyway so I can hear it <laughs> all right my friend you are going to do your socialite oh, here it is your socialite block uh, from Zen Chic and if you have some text print or big prints this is a perfect perfect block for something a little bit larger scale and don't forget that if you've got these papers and you want to use them now's the day and the snapdragon all right i love you Mwah. thank you for being here in the sloan zone i will see you online